Thank you very much to Upstart for sponsoring this video. Go to upstart.com slash toygalaxy to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Long before Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse demonstrated the potential danger of cross-dimensional breaches, there was a real-world example of an alternate reality interpretation of Spider-Man bleeding into our universe. It was a 41-episode what-if experiment that also established the final piece of what would become one of the most popular television genres in Japan and ultimately around the world. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Toei's Spider-Man. Up front, I want to say gomen asai. I'm sorry for getting any and or all of the pronunciations wrong in this video. There's quite a few Japanese names and stuff, and I am not properly trained in the Japanese language. Watashi wa YouTube no hito desu. Japanese Spider-Man, also known as Supaida-Man, a phonetic interpretation of the name Spider-Man in the alphabet of the Japanese language, is a 41-episode live-action television series that ran from March of 1978 to March of 1979. It is a loose interpretation of the Marvel Comics character that borrows the costume and basic powers, but takes a whole lot of creative license with the rest of his story. In this version of Spider-Man, an alien named Garia crash lands on Earth. His ship, the Marveler, is discovered by Takuya Yamashiro, a 22-year-old motocross racer. Garia gives some of his blood to Takuya, which grants him superpowers, since Garia happens to be a great warrior from the planet Spider. He was on the hunt for Professor Monster and the Iron Cross Army, who, by the way, destroyed Planet Spider and left him as the only surviving warrior. Garia also gives Takuya a mechanism to activate his costume, his webbing, and summon the Marveler, which, by the way, also transforms into a giant mech super robot, or for you Americans, a Zord called Leopardon. Along with the Spider Protector costume, the Spider Machine GP7, and the capacity to summon the Marveler, Takuya now has a spider sense which alerts him to the nearby dangers of the Iron Cross army. Garia's blood has given him superhuman strength, speed, agility, and the ability to climb walls. Like Peter Parker, Takuya keeps his identity secret to protect his friends and family until he begins cooperating with Juzo Mamaya and the Interpol Secret Intelligence Division. Luckily for Takuya, the ISID is also pretty good at keeping secrets. This Spider-Man occupies an interesting hybrid space in pop culture, being simultaneously a distinctly American and Japanese creation. At the same time, he also bridges the genres of tokusatsu and sentai on Japanese television. Tokusatsu is a genre of television and film entertainment, not to be confused with Tokotaku, the Japanese toy company, or To Go Tacos, which is what I had for lunch. <laughs> Tokusatsu literally means special effects, but it has come to represent the entire spectrum of live-action costume superheroes, crime fighters, robots, and monsters. The term tokusatsu can be applied to all types of entertainment, going all the way back to and including kabuki theater. But the modern usage really gets going with Godzilla in 1954. Ultraman in 1966, Giant Robo in 1967, and Kamen Rider in 1971, all examples of tokusatsu programs. Even Go Ranger in 1975, which, upon its creation, establishes the tokusatsu subgenre called Sentai. Sentai literally means team, or squadron, or force, and generally focuses on superhero teams. It's the subgenre that, years later, would become Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in America. After Go Ranger in 1975 and Jaka in 1977, Spider-Man arrived in 1978 with all the bug-centric visuals of the Kamen Rider series and the superheroics of the Sentai series, merging the aesthetics of both and adding a giant super robot as his key finishing move, not to mention a valuable asset on toy shelves, and it was all the result of a three-year licensing agreement between Marvel Comics and Toei. Toei has been producing movies, television, and video games since 1951. Marvel Comics has been doing the same since 1939. The team-up initiated a three-year period where they had the option to use each other's intellectual properties. Initially, Toei planned a version of Spider-Man that was kind of like a reverse Spider-Verse concept. The Spider-Man would literally be teamed up with a character named Yamato Takeru, a warrior prince from the first century who had time-traveled into the present. Spider-Man would have been his sidekick. But Toei decided not to take any chances. Spider-Man was a top-tier feature character, and they had the license, so why not build a show around him specifically? Spider-Man, Leopardon and all, was a success, and for the follow-up, Toei was going to produce a show about Captain America, or at least a Japanese counterpart of Captain America. 
They pulled the ship back a little closer to the Sentai team concept, expanded the roster back to five, included representation from around the world, added a transforming robot, and released Battle Fever J in 1979, officially giving birth to the Super Sentai genre as it is known today. Toei, in cooperation with Marvel, would release two more Super Sentai shows, Denshi Sentai Denziman in 1980 and Taiyo Sentai Sun Vulcan in 1981. Meanwhile, back in the US, Marvel had utilized Combatra V and Danguard Ace in their line of comics supporting Mattel's Shogun Warriors toy line in 1979. But Stan Lee loved what he was seeing with the live-action superhero shows that Toei was producing and set out to find a network, any network, that would run them. Marvel pitched it. They pitched a concept featuring the greatest Super Sentai show ever, My Son Vulcan. It would be easy and cost-efficient to redub the audio with English-speaking voice actors, reshoot the out-of-costume parts, and churn out episodes that were coming in from Japan 30% complete. It was an idea exactly one decade too early as Bandai would execute the trick and stick the landing with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 1993. And now, since those characters were actually Toei creations, now, now I'm never gonna get to see my sweet eagle, shark, and panther as part of Hasbro's lightning collection. Where's the justice? Toei took a lot of liberties with Spider-Man. Ultimately, legend has it that Stan Lee himself was a big fan of the show. He loved the action, the theater, the way the character moved. It, it was very good. I enjoyed it. And it was so different than the way we do them in the United States that it was fun because I was looking at a totally different style and a good style. But Stan Lee isn't necessarily Marvel. Marvel wasn't crazy about the idea of Spider-Man piloting a giant robot, but relented when they were shown the potential to reach their desired audience and make a lot of money selling toys. Leopardon toys were included in the Chogokin line of transforming robots and vehicles. And it worked. Kids loved that Leopardon and by default Spider-Man. It boosted the show and ratings and assured Toei that going forward, they would be stupid not to include giant robots in their live action superhero shows for kids. Leopardon the toy would complete the circle coming back to America as part of Bandai America's Godaiken line in 1984 heavy-handedly described on the package as a robot that is half leopard and a space-age tank too. Do me a favor, put that on my tombstone. Spider-Man helped create the toy-centric superhero genre of television and movies on both sides of the Pacific. But if you were looking for episodes of the show prior to 2005, you were out of luck. Spider-Man was owned by Marvel, so Toei couldn't release a collection with him in it. One VHS cassette released in the 80s had the first episode, the 31st episode, and a short film edit that had run in theaters. Toei wasn't even allowed to use photographs of Spider-Man without paying additional licensing rights to Marvel once that agreement had ended. In 2005, Toei reacquired the rights to distribute the series and in December released a DVD set in Japan featuring all 41 episodes. In 2006, Bandai included Leopardon in their Soul of Chogokin line, which revisits classic Chogokin toys with modern engineering design and functionality. It even included a scale Spider-Man and his GP7 spider machine. In 2009, Marvel began its slow embrace of the character. From March to December of that year, they released a new episode online each week until the entire series was available with original audio and English subtitles. They have since been removed. And it's this internet, this World Wide Web that the rest of us have to thank for our knowledge of the character at all. Japanese Spider-Man is one of those things that has gained prominence and mass appeal internationally through accessibility. In the past, it disappeared into obscurity. Now, today, nothing disappears into obscurity. In 2014, Marvel went all in. They fully embraced Takuya Yamashiro and Leah Pardon, prominently featuring both in the Spider-Verse crossover series. It was the series that inspired the 2018 hit film, This Spider-Man, Toei Spider-Man, was now officially part of Marvel Universe canon. There's nothing too obscure for the internet and nothing escapes an online petition. After the success of Into the Spider-Verse, fans began lobbying the creators to include Toei's Spider-Man in the sequel. Executive producer and writer Phil Lord suggested that if Into the Spider-Verse made it to $200 million, he would include Japanese Spider-Man in the sequel. As of this video, Into the Spider-Verse has only done $190 million domestic and, um, 
$375 million worldwide. So I don't know if that counts. Can we get Phil on the phone, see if he can get some clarification? But it was recently pointed out that Leopardon does kind of appear in the first movie as a rough sketch in Miles Morales' sketchbook. It's a concept too cool not to attempt to exploit, and Toei has no reason not to play along with Sony to get it done. Takuya Yamashiro's most recent appearance was as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Mattel produced a special edition Hot Wheels GP7 Spider Machine with box art featuring Toei's Spider-Man, which certainly makes it seem like Japanese Spider-Man is on his way back in one form or another. Toei's Spider-Man's legacy is one of cross-cultural marketing, a core influence on an entire genre of international superhero television and toys, as well as a singularly unique interpretation of a character that has been around for over 50 years. No longer lost to time and legal red tape, Takuya Yamashiro could be the next household name, along with Miles Morales, janky old broke hobo Spider-Man, and Spider-Ham. Upstart can help you sort out those old credit cards, some of those high interest loans, so you can be the responsible pop culture enthusiast that you want to be. Your credit is important and Upstart can help you either get back on track or give you a head start in the right direction. Upstart looks at the bigger picture, including education and job history. Get a smarter rate through a more complex picture of who you are and what you do. Upstart makes it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes. The best part? Once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or achieve their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash toygalaxy to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. Once again, go to upstart.com slash toygalaxy to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Thank you for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below which Marvel character you'd like to see with a corresponding giant robot. I love Captain America, but I'm curious just how big Galactus's neck robot would be and what it would be made out of. Metal? What kind of metal? I don't know. How much metal? A lot of metal. Cut.